dear viewers, welcome you all to our show, OSA, that is the Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well during this COVID-19 pandemic situation by wearing masks and keeping distance with each other. Dear viewers, today our topic is Elizar of Magic in Osteomyelitis and Infective Non-Union. The Osteomyelitis is a graveyard for all the orthopedic surgeons as well as the Infective Non-Union. But we can overcome this problem by the touch of Elizaro. And our honorable speaker is Professor Mofakarul Barisar, the magnificent speaker, the legendary and the pioneer Elizabeth Surgeon of Bangladesh. Welcome, sir. Welcome to our show, OSA, Orthopedic Solution Academy. Thank you very much, Ranveer. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, dear viewers, we have uh, two learned academic experts with us, uh, one from the Kurgan, Russia, the very learned Professor Novikov, sir. And another one is uh, Dr. Shamsul Huda, consultant Elizabeth surgeon from Patna, India. I would like to request both of them to join with us, Professor Novikov, sir, and Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir. Please join with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, all of doctors. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, dear viewers, uh, we all know that the osteomyelitis and the infective non union is a very difficult thing. And uh, we cannot manage all these things by other uh, implants or other uh, facilities of the orthopedics, but uh, we can manage it by the magic of Elizaro. But how? Our speaker, Professor Mofakarul Barisar, will discuss about this topic. I don't want to spend any more time. I would like to request our honorable speaker, Professor Mofakarul Barisar, to start his magnificent presentation. Professor Mofakarul Barisar, would you please? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Tadvir, and my dear Professor Novikov, Ishamsuluda, and Tanvir, and the dear viewers. Uh, today I'm going to talk on osteomyelitis in adult and infected non union of long bones, which we are treating all the time by Lizard of Technique. Uh, can you uh, uh, see my slides and hear me? Yes, sir. We can see your yes. slides and uh, we can hear you okay. clearly and loudly. Okay, okay. So I always love to show this, my places where uh, I worked as an orthopedic surgeon during my residency and during my MS and during my PhD in Tashkent in, in Kiev, Ukraine capital. And this is the Kurgan place. I love to show this one the orthopedic capital. This is our institute, 1000 bedded hospital. Uh, I myself here with our all faculties. This is Nitor in Dhaka. And this is for the time being now I am working. This is the biggest diabetic hospital in uh, Dhaka. And this is Bangladesh Institute of Health Science where I'm working now. This is my private chamber and this is my private hospital. This is I myself in Kurgan, and I always love to show this one, 4M, man, meat, method, and magician. So let us talk about the osteomyelitis, which is a chronic inflammatory condition affecting bone and its medullary cavity using the result of bone infection. Chronic osteomyelitis is often associated with angular rotational deformity. The angle may be in any plane, such as procurvatum you can find, and you can find recurvatum, varus valgus, or in the oblique plane. Deformities of the adjacent joints, limb length discrepancy, you will see, and at the same time, you will find deep. Cellulitis and septicemia and chronic infection that doesn't respond well to treatment. And recent advances in the management of chronic osteomyelitis include radical dissection and bone transport, which we can do, we can be we can do it by Elizar technique, and which will have to improve the nutritional status of the patient. And anatomical and physiological emphasis on classification, and of course, you should have to think about the newer antibiotics. Whenever you are looking for osteomyelitis, you should have to go for clinical evaluation, medical history, 
medical problems as for example diabetes mellitus rheumatoid arthritis immune compromise will affect around healing and increase the risk of infection of course you should have to take the anamnesis of smoking and what are the stage of osteomyelitis this is very important in 1985 dr cherney made a developed staging system for long bone osteomyelitis these are the four stages medullary superficial localized and of course the diffuse one pathologic class physiologic class of host a host good immune system and delivery b host compromised locally and c host requires suppressive or no treatment treatment worse than disease in adult osteomyelitis is usually a subacute chronic infection that develops secondary if you think about the treatment we will have to follow the sub principles isolation of the pathogens aggressive surgical debridement all infected non viable at devitalized tissue removal of foreign materials dead space management and reconstruction of the soft tissue and bone defects appropriate antimicrobial therapy or antibiotic delivery in bangladesh we are getting this osteomyelitis and this is very common and severity is measured by two parameters chenni made a classification and local status such as the length of gap created after debridement shortening due to growth arrest and gap closure growth arrest formation of involucrum and presence of deformity and uh, in different places i have done uh, i have treated the osteomyelitis in different places in my country and since 1993 to 2020 total number of cases 155 out of these 115 is severe and uh, age range was 18 to 45 and follow up period 2 to 27 years the cases were treated as follows thorough debridement removal of sequestry and correcting the cavity acute docking if a good docking is not possible the gradual docking is done in case of children we have done the control diastasis and corticotomy and application of filizar gaps are closed by both transport which we can do very easily by filizar external fixator lengthening was done whenever required deformity is corrected by corrective osteotomy by the filizar frame and in case of pendiversal osteomyelitis in children we did nothing with pathological fractures we just fix the fix the bone with biocompatible thin wires and we are uh, always allowing the patient to go for weight bearing in motion why is that of you know this is the multidirectional multiplanar multiplexial deformities superior to other conventional methods advantage if you think about the this is minimally invasive decrease neurovascular and soft tissue injury and no chances of infection severe multidirectional deformity can be corrected and regarding the muscles we must uh, we must think about the muscles for locomotion for dynamic stabilizers for blood drainage from dependent areas and blood supply to the skin and the periosteum periosteum is very important the osteoblast plays salient role in the growth and repair of bony tissue most growth in bones is produced by osteoblast osteoblast produce hard mineral matrix by absorbing calcium to ions in the blood in case of fracture or damage to bones the osteoblast of the periosteum repair the damage and replace the mineral matrix often reinforcing in the bone beyond its original thickness if you look at these the left side the periosteum two layers fibrous layer osteogenic layer and the osteoblast blood supply to the outer one third of the bone blood supply to the callus and osteoprogenitor cells to the bone look at the right side circumcial lamina laminal layer of the periosteum fibrous layer periosteum canaliculi lacuna osteocytes and perforating surface fibers and role of soft tissue is very important is very vital vital and healthy soft tissue gives blood supply and are the key for biology of bone healing and protection against complications Dr. Gardelstan, uh, Gardelstone, sorry, 1881 to 1950. What he told? What is the bone? Bone is a plant with its root in the soft tissue. You can see here the Robert 
Robert Garlestone Cathod told this very important one for all the orthopedic surgeons. How to damage the sum of injury? What kind of injury? Greater energy dissipated, greater associated soft tissue injury. And treatment, time tissue handling. Think about the time of tissue handling. Proper soft tissue handling. Sharp dissection. Minimally periosteal scraping. Avoid creating planes. Gentle use of retractors. And gentle pressure of the skin. Gentle pressure of the skin at adequate hemostasis. Remember, small incision do not protect soft tissues. And if you think about the reconstruction of the soft tissues, you should have to follow the ladder. Start with the simple, then proceed to complex procedures. A team work, keep your plastic surgeon involved. Here, you can go for complex to simple, free flap. You can go for local flap, skin grafting, and primary closure also. And in summary, dear friends, the higher the energy of injury, the more soft tissue damage. Respect soft tissue all the time by proper timing of surgery and careful surgical handling. Healthy and vital soft tissues provide blood supply and combat infection. We should have to achieve the soft tissue coverage. Consider the reconstruction ladder. What are the problems with old healing and old bone healing? These are the most important problems of the osteomyelitis. Now let us see the some cases. 40 years man, open infected wound, exposed in blood with the dribbling pus. Look at this here. If you see this one, pus is coming from here. Look at this, he was treated elsewhere and came to my place, came to my place. And look at this during the treatment, how dribbling pus is coming from that side. He was treated by plate and screws. And what happened as a result? You can see here, and we have removed the plates. And sequentially, we were planning to treat the patient with the Elizaro fixator. And look at this patient after removal of the plates and screws. We fixed this with the three construction of the frame, three Elizaro rings, etc. And if you look at this left side, before surgery, during surgery, and after the removal of the apparatus, and you can see the after five months follow. -up. This is after one year follow. -up. Look at the left side before treatment. The follow up after one year treatment. After one year treatment, this is after two years follow up. You can see here. So from this way, from this way, this is how you can tackle all kinds of very complex problems which was treated by plates and screws. And you can see the dribbling pass coming from, from, from the wound. And there is a big gap of uh, big gap uh, in the anterolateral part of the uh, tibia. Look at this 30 years old male, chronic osteomyelitis. If you look at the visible sinus with black skin, condition of the skin, and look at here, this is the whole cavity here, periosteal reaction with sequestrum in situ. And then what I have done, radiogram view before surgery, you can see here, the, this is the whole medullary cavity and lower one third of the tibia. I just fixed that one. These are the console wires. This is the console wire. This is the console wire. I fixed it only with biocompatible Elizaro wires. And then this is before. Now you can see a result in the right side. After six months follow up, this is a clinical appearance of the patient after six months follow up. Look at this. Just compare this one with this one. This is chronic osteomyelitis, right tibia fibula with multiple discharging sinuses. The girl came with vascular injury. She was treated. These are the discharging sinuses point. You can see here, and two tibial artery was damaged, and she was just treated. Her posterior tibial artery was okay when he was treated. That there was a big sequestrum here. These are the sinuses. This is my uh, pandemic time. I treated this patient. You can see 
and this is the uh, uh, fixation of the lizard and you can see here next follow up and the same girl histogram we did non united fracture is seen in the upper shaft the right fibula you can see here old hill fracture is present in the upper shaft of the tibia a fairly large lyric area is noted you can see this histogram it indicates the direction of the how you can go through this this is sinogram or fistulogram we have done this and this is after removal after removal of the sequestrum you can see here the remove and the patient is now okay so only you can see the broadish abscess lower one third cure touch and you can go for fixation with the elizar of wires no pins and these are the console wires and then this is the healing process you can see here only after 8 months follow up this is also chronic osteomyelitis of the left tibia you can see here lower one third of the tibia compare the right one with the left side then what we need we fix this with elizar of wire you know with a wire or elizar of wire four ring constructs with console wire and this is the console wire we are pulling down this console wire up to the first cortex and then patient with the elizar of fixated and then you can see the bone condition after treatment this is the radiographic view before this is after four months follow up and this is the clinical appearance of the patient and dear friend you can see here this is also combined with infected non even of the left humerus and at the same time bone quality is not good here is the ulna and the radius you can see the non even of the ulna and the deformity of the left humerus deformity in the ulna and what we did just fixation we put a keywet to make the mechanical axis in the same way and by this we have fixed this lower one third of the humerus and what as a result what happened you can see here the whole humerus uh, consolidation good consolidation all the after 6 months follow up so this is a case of chronic osteomyelitis of the radius and ulna you can see a right radius is discharging sinuses sinuses is always present in case of osteomyelitis look at this here this is the peak sequestrum in the uh, distal part of the radius and what we have done as you can see after two months follow up fix this with biocompatible thin wires and this is the radiographic view of the same patient this is with elizar of paretus and now you can compare this one with this one look at this we have not done anything fix this with the apparatus now you can see the external view of this key of the radius and ulna this is after 5 months follow up another case chronic osteomyelitis left radius ulna with discharging sinus you can see here discharging sinus he was treated elsewhere with uniaxial fixator then came to my place came to my place and what i have done i have removed everything and fixed this with the lizar of paredes and at the same time biocompatible only wires and what we have done and as a result you can see the right side this is the radiographic view before treatment in axial fixator this is after this bound in the apparatus and you can see the smiling patient with good consolidation and callus formation this is a big gap known in of the right femur right femur you can see here we have done the porticotomy here just a very big cavity here in the cavity discharging sinus was there and then destruction was continued and as a result the patient can stand with full weight bearing this is the full consolidation of the bone you can see here a little bit deformity or this is after 8 and 1/2 months this is the clinical appearance of the same patient after 9 months this is also published in american medical journal 2016 discussion of osteogenesis by elizar of technique for infected gap non union of the femur this is our last time and so i told regarding the chronic osteomyelitis in children this is also published in american journal
It is out of techniques of four part part. Number one, when it gives mechanical stability, and at the same time, when you are giving mechanical stability, in, and at the same time, when giving compression and giving destruction, you are getting billions of billions of cells around the line of compression and destruction. You are getting newborn forming cells. And at the same time, increase blood circulation 330% which increase the metabolic transformation of the local tissue. And it is very importantly, we can say the medullary and the periosteal blood supply is not disturbed. Dear friend, in case of osteomyelitis, I can say you that radical removal of all dead tissues, lengthening of the bone and bone transport have given excellent results. Patient tolerate multiple lengthening very well. Bone resection and bone transport have revolutionized the treatment of chronic osteomyelitis. Recurrence is not due to the resistant organism, but to inadequate deprivement of the tissue. Now, I would like to talk regarding the infected non union of the long bones. This is long bones and is very difficult for the orthopedic surgeons. Why? Because of infection, because of the bone loss, because of the shortening, and because of the poor shop tissue coverage. And at the same time, we're getting the deformity. If you go for a step by step management and definitive treatment by Lizar fixated, we can achieve our, we can target. We can achieve our cases without any bone grafting. And in my cases, I never use the bone graft. Since 2095 to 2020, for the last 25 years, I have treated 545 patients with infected non union. The problems are you will get sinuses, you can get osteomyelitis combined with the infection, you can get bone and soft tissue loss. Of course, you'll find the fibrosis, osteopenia. You'll get a lot of skin problems and just joint stiffness. You'll find the complex deformities. Of course, you'll get the LLD and the multi drug resistant polyvectal infection. Because the patients with osteomyelitis or with infected non union for a long time without any cause, the doctors have prescribed the antibacterial uh, uh, drugs. And the materials, I told you that 360 were male, 185 female, mean age was 25.5, 545, 2000, 2020. These are the localization of the non-union, humerus, radius ulna, femur, tibia, calcaneum. And closed fracture, we treated, we treated the open fracture, gastrilo 2, 3A and 3B. And what about the surgical technique? Before going that, we must follow the some basic principles. Biopsy, we must do for that. All necrotized non-bleeding bone must undergo debridement. A high speed bar is to debride the bone and continuous cooling irrigation is applied to the bar to decrease the thermal area. And at the same time, you'll have to see the paprika sign. The tibial cortex experiences with very little bleeding. All patients are treated with six Swiss antibiotic that are specific to the culture organism for the adult. And if you think about the strategies for treating INU, this is I myself where I follow this principle. I do this. If you think about the location of the femur, dive is the femur, you can see, dive is the tibia, dive is the humerus, radius and ulna, of course, intraarticular region. Measurement of the bone, it depends on how you go for treatment. If in the femur, greater than five, less than five, I always go for this bone transportation. Diverse of the tibia, same if it is greater than 10, four to 10 centimeter, less than four centimeter, I always go for resection. It is out of double level corticotomy. It is bone is 10 centimeter, uh, greater than 10 centimeter. If you think about the humerus, Humerus, five centimeter up to five, nothing to think about that one. At the same time, you can go for resection and ilizaro bone transport. Same case in Alna, resection and ilizaro bone transport. I am talking here only with the ilizaro bone transport. Of course, you have other methods also. Intramedullary rotting, you can go for papier technique and other technique also. The methods of eliminating purulan cavities. Filling of the purulan cavity with one of the fragment ends 
by gradual transposition of the fragments constituting the cavity, filling of cavity by shifting of a cortical wall. Results, if you think about, I told you 545 patient, excellence 248, 152 good at the percent, 34.26%, uh, uh, fair in 46, 9.7, and poor in two patient. And this is a summary classification. Uh, sometimes you follow these criteria for non-unions. Now, dear friend, you can see a lady of 48, 40 years. She came to my place with segmental fracture of the right lower femur with intraarticular involvement, with fracture right tibia and fibula, with a huge bone gap with solial flap done over right tibia and fibula with injectional fix at an in situ. This is the situation, 40 years old lady. Look at this X-ray. Now you can see intraarticular gap, segmental, comminuted, in the tibia, there is a very big gap. What to do? Look at this. During treatment, keeping the unilateral fixator in OR. I am putting this one. Look at this. Right lower zone after two months follow-up. This is we have shifted pro-tibia, fibula to the tibia. You can see here. There was a periosteum here. That's why there is a bone is going on growing here but we have transported the fibula to the tibia. And what as a result, you can see the dear friends, the tibia, this femur, and this is the tibia. You can see the protibia, protib fibula to protibia. That is tibialization during treatment. And this is after five months follow-up. Now you can see before this one, the whole femur with intraarticular fracture, this, this was a gap. This is the femur I'm showing. Now you can see the tibia. Protibia. Now you can see here. Patient is happy. She is happy. This is the clinic, clinical appearance of the patient. Now, 35 years old man, he was treated elsewhere by interlocking laid with gentamicin bits. Now you can see here, there was a discharge sinus. This is gentamicin bits. He came to my place. These beds were for four months, but nothing was helping this patient. Then what I did, I have removed this. I have put the Elizarov in the proximal part of the shans, two chances here, and in the middle and the distal part, I put the only Elizarov wedge. This is after seven months follow-up. You can see the patient with Elizarov apparatus in the frame can move very easily. This is healing process, you can see, after five months follow-up, this is the clinical appearance of the patient. 55 years man, infected bone loss of right tibia fibula. You can see here gap, infection, treated elsewhere, then came to my place, and what I did, you can see right side and the left side, both the legs, and patient was walking with the support of the walker. And this is before, this is after. This is the clinical appearance of the patient with a smiling face. Now you can see infected non your right lower tibia infection. You don't need to do anything. No curatage, nothing. That fixed with the biocompatible thin wires. This is the one olive. And this is one, two, three wires. And you allow your patient to go for loading and movement. And this is, you can see after eight months follow-up, standing and sitting position of the same patient. And now we can see the double plating with screw and down elsewhere with discharging sinuses. This is the double plating was done. See the bone quality. Here is the non-union, the discharging sinus. Then I removed everything. Fix this with the Elizar fixator. One, two, three, and four. Four frame construct. And look at this, how this patient is from the village area and with the apparatus uh, he is just his the motorcycle how he is moving you can see here patient is very happy with the lizard apparatus and he is moving he is just roving all the time with this motorcycle and patient is happy you can see here in the village of bangladesh he is just driving motorcycle so i can show you this one Dear friends, you can see how after three months follow-up, this is INU, infected non-unit, the radius and ulna. 
siege bone quality treated with the rash nail and then i have removed fixed with the lizard of olive and biocompatible thin wires and this is the follow up you can see a little bit deformity but this is acceptable for that plates with non union radius and ulna you can see here these are the very simple cases i don't think this is also uh, published in uh, american med trip journal this is the gastrio 3b you can you are treating all the time we are treating all, all the time look at this gastrio elsewhere and this is uh, with the lizara preparators after three months follow up now you can see before and after with the discharge the sinuses now patient is cute patient is happy so now you can see here with console wires from the two directions from the vertical and from the transverse side look at the console wires if you pull the console wires gradually console wire means you wire from one cortex to another cortex and gradually pull from vertical and from the transverse this is the wire technique and as a result what is happening you are getting new vascularization of this bone bone quality is good and here you have done the uh, corticotomy for lengthening and this is the scenario in my country look at this 11 years old girl with severely injured exposed bone of the femur and the tibia first day in war 14 days after fixation 21 days after fixation this is 28 days after two months follow up two and a half months follow up and you can see this is after five months follow up this is called living prosthesis you can see here how she was treated uh, by elizar of technique and you can see here the same girl after three years follow up look at the tibia and the fibula now you can see uh, this is final follow up after uh, three years this is final follow up after three years so this is not moving a little bit disturbing problem this is also uh, published big bone loss difficial tibia long bone dear friends very severe infected case with gastrio 3b you are treated elsewhere with any axial fixator look at the calcaneum look at the whole tibia came to my place and he was advised to go for amputation bk amputation and came to my place i took it as a challenge look at this and then keeping the uniaxial fixator i tried to put the lizard of fixator and then gradually after four months follow up this is after uh, four months follow up you can see five months follow up same patient bone transportation lengthening and nine months follow up see the back of the calcaneum see how he is working this is after 11 months is the teacher of the government college uh not far away from dhaka now you can see the bone quality of the same patient so if your relizar of in your hand and if you follow the principle and the philosophy you can do a lot of things with this now let us see the some cases with the diabetic patient look at this this gentleman of 45 years he came to a place for the last 4 years he was suffering with the diabetic ulcer he got lot of antibiotics nothing can help see the skin of the area of the medial malleus region came to my place i put the elizarov with console wires and did the osteotomy in the distal part of the tibia and what is the result you can see the ulcer before healed ulcer after 6 months follow up see the bone quality and what we have done this you can see here this is the putting the wires you go through this like this from this direction from this direction and then you try to pull your wires gradually and what you will find you will see the redness of the skin the skin condition is good now discoloration has disappeared now this is the healers due to this is the beauty of elizar this is the principle of elizar how you can help the patient long course diabetic patient with big ulcer and this is you can see one one in the single 
is in the world. My CTEPA paid is of the cardiologist. He is our from Chittagong uh, uh, doctor. He is suffering for this. My CTEPA paid is came to my place and I treated this patient with Elizarov. You can see destruction in geogenesis and widening of the tibia. I have done the left side. You can go, you can see, and ulcer is healed for angiogenesis, neurogenesis, tissue genesis, dermatogenesis. And this is also published in angiogenesis in accelerated healing of painful multi drug resistant modular food ulcer. A rare case report in Medgrave American Journal. And in conclusion, dear friends, I'd like to say the I and U of long bones is a challenge to the orthopedic and degenerative surgeon. We face problems of infection, deformity, bone gaps, and small distal fragment. Step-by-step -step treatment by Lizarab technique allowed us to control infection to achieve 100% union. These are the animals. Research was going on in Kurgan all the time. And this is destruction in angiogenesis. You can see formation of destruction regenerate after how many days, 15 days, 28 days. You can see. And these are the cases I always love to show in my center. This is the Barilizaro or Jewish center in Dhaka. Different varieties of Elizaro patients during pandemic time. And finally, I'd like to carry the message whenever you can show something with evidence, with science, and surgical skill of the surgeon. You can show something by Lizaro technique. And all the time, we should ever think about the biology. And this is not a very uh, cost-effective, cost-effective technique, and the globe might have appreciate. And in my country, in Bangladesh, we are holding a very strong foothold regarding the Lizaro. These are my published books. I love to show my old Kurgan fellows in my center in Dhaka uh, and in uh, my uh, Dacha, you know. So this is in my house, Professor Shepsov, Novikov, Dushin, and Burjanov. And I always convey my gratitude to all these uh, great scientists, Professor Elizara, Professor Shepsov, and the leader director. Thank you so much for your kind attention and thank you very much again. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your magnificent presentation. Uh, I always told that your presentation is just like a magnificent movie. Uh, when it ends up, uh, we just think uh, how 40 minutes gone, just like uh, one minute or two minutes. So that was an excellent presentation. Uh, now I would like to uh, request our honorable uh, academic expert to uh, share their uh, knowledge regarding the uh, topic. Now I would like to request uh, uh, Dr. Shamsul Huda sir to uh, share his uh, knowledge regarding the topic of management of osteomyelitis as because of osteomyelitis are very common in uh, subcontinent uh, in Bangladesh, in India, in Nepal and Bhutan also. Uh, sir, uh, would you please share your uh, experience with us, Dr. Shamsul Raja, sir. Yeah, thank you, Tanmur. Welcome from India. Uh, Truly said, we have a lot of, lot of patients of osteomyelitis and bone infections in India. So many cases. Most of the cases are neglected cases because the patient gets trauma, gets infection. They get long duration dressing, months of dressing, months of heavy antibiotics, and the immunity goes very less. When the patient reaches at our time, they have a stiff joint, scar tissue, purulent pus coming out from it. Uh, mostly they're around, either on plus or on H6. The whole limb is atrophied or scarred. Then the role of Elizabeth starts from here. We do a thorough debridement. Thorough, thorough debridement that is a very important part. We remove the dead bone. If we see if there is any bone loss or shortening, and as Paris said, beautifully print everything. Uh, Elizero is a device where every other implants fail. Elizero starts, the magic starts here. So, which which you can treat all of the different variety of cases and adults and pediatric complication, both optomelitis, uh, first with Elizero, we do debridement, we do uh, removal of dead bone, we can do deformity correction, we can do. Uh, bone transport and everything with Elizero. And uh, most of the cases we do when we do bone transport, either it can be small or even I've done around six to seven inches of bone transport, triforcal transport. So 
mash up time the skin graft is not needed in some cases with the small pet we can also give uh, whack or flap over elizero that was also tried with them so uh, elizero is a boon for uh, infection of the bones thank you tanmay thank you barisha uh thank you sir uh, sir uh, do you uh, put elizero uh, with flap in a same sitting or in the different sitting in the different sitting normally uh, what you do after debridement we put elizero and uh, do a series of dressings it feels very good if i see a small gap is left then i just uh, put a wax over it uh, can really the wax can be removed or you know by a wax or flap then we apply the wax so we normally we do flap or uh, wax in the next stage only okay thank you sir thank you very much uh, now i would like to request professor navikam sir uh, to share his knowledge uh, regarding the uh, non union of uh, bones uh, long bones uh, sir Uh, how could you manage uh, these things uh, in your country, and how you are managing these sort of problems in your country? In uh, our country, uh, our medicine rule more strictly than in India and uh, Bangladesh, because uh, if uh, some patient have uh, infection uh, situation, we have special department. Uh, we uh, separate all of these patients, uh, special staff, special de uh, department. And uh, when uh, the last time you ask uh, about my experience, I know about uh, this situation. And in our center, uh, we have just now osteomyelitis clinic. In Elizabeth, we have only one uh, department. Just now, we start when our center start using uh, different techniques, uh, plate, uh, monolateral uh, device, uh, total heat, uh, total heat. Uh, we have situation when patient with uh, number of patient increase, uh, and uh, usually all of these patient with Inazi, not Elizarov osteosynthesis. During my life, near 40 years, I have a patient with osteomyelitis. All my patients have problem with infection, including today. Change bandages uh, with antibiotics two, three days. If we have any uh, positive effect, remove uh, problem wire and forgot about this problem. Never, never uh, Elizara gives me problem with uh, osteomyelitis. Only one patient. I cannot say this is osteomyelitis. This is, uh, how I can say, canal. When uh, wire beyond the office. And uh, one more. Uh, just now, we start intensive very good clean epoca de elizara we all time cover and during the treatment we cover all of place uh, with uh, wires with bandages two three months we haven't any problem then after five six months problem come why my opinion uh, opinions and my experience i think this is uh, infections not from outside, not from uh, another patient. This domestic patient or uh, domestic infection from body of patient. When immune system go down, our domestic infection go up. And just now we start wash, wash all body, wash with soap, wash uh extremities with frame we decrease number of microbes and just now infection department sent to us uh patient uh, for me with infection we clean wash and stimulate disappear very interesting this is uh, so many points what is it osteomyelitis 
and one more fat patient and smoker and drugs patients have a chance for good result result will be but and so many patients continue to smoke and uh, this uh, situation uh, we help but osteomyelitis will wake up with uh, with time and if i won't help uh, i have agreement with the patients please during the treatment not smoke not drink not drug after treatment this is his life and uh, i won't repeat again uh, elizarov give me uh, happiness because during my job i haven't infection severe complications problem i have but this is not complications i haven't complications uh, with infections during 40 years and i recommend young doctor with any case with uh, correction deformity with leg lengthening post-trauma case congenital case elizarov this is our freedom and possibilities Thank you. For uh, sharing your valuable. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for sharing your valuable knowledge. Uh, now, I would like to uh, request uh, Professor Mofakur Bari, sir. I have one question, sir. Uh, what are the parameters uh, that will do or observe radiologically before uh, removing the uh, frame? And uh, how could I tell the patient that? Uh, you are now completely recovered, so uh, we want to remove your Elizabeth frame and you can come back to your normal life. What are the parameters that we have to do before doing that things? Yes, very important question. Uh, as for example, the patient came with you to your place with osteomyelitis or non-union infection, okay? You just treat the patient all the time, meticulous intelligent follow-up, and before dismounting, removing the apparatus, you just go for 3D, 3 uh, AP, lateral, and oblique view of the X-ray. Three cortices, if you see the your three cortices are okay, union is okay, then you can just loosen the rods, tell your patient, tell your patient, to loosen the rods to walk. If patient walks without any pain free, and there is no movement, then you can go for removal of the apparatus. This is the uh, principle, basic principle. Sometimes if surgeon is very experienced, even you don't need to read the, uh, remove the rods. You can see the x-ray and you can feel your hand, everything is okay. Then you can go for uh, uh, removal of the apparatus. And sometimes before removal, we just go in the OT, take the patient OT, and we just see on the CRM control, is everything is okay? On the table, you can take the decision that you can put the removal of the apparatus. This is, it depends on the experience of the surgeon and some basic principles you should have to follow. Okay? Oh, that's great, sir. That's great. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, uh, what is the role of uh, console wire? Uh, can we use console, the console, console wire in wire. other cases? Yes, you see the console wire role. Uh, if you put the wire, console means from one cortex to another cortex. Don't pierce the second cortex. You can put the four, five, six console wires. These wires with fixed to the rods uh, from the transverse and from the uh, vertical way. When, whenever you have put the console layers and from the two or three days, you just start just moving the wires from cortex to last cortex. Uh, this helps in new vascularization, increasing circulation in the in the whole uh, bones. And as a result, you'll see you are achieving new vascularization. You are getting union. Uh, if your skin is discolored, new vascularization will change your color of the skin. This is the beauty of the console wire with Elizarov. And we are this is the wire technique, and we are using all the time in diabetic patients. In non-healing ulcer patients, this is the role of consolers wear technique. You can see, you can you can go for. I have a four lectures in BLRS, British Library Reconstruction 
society. I have four lectures starting from 17 to June. They have already recorded. One of these presentation is called Solware. You can go for that in BLRS, British Leap Reconstruction System Society. Uh, I am their international member and I have, they have selected my four papers. One of them is called Solware Technique for diabetic food, for modular food, for non-healing ulcer, how you can treat with the Elizar. That is, that's why I'm taking all the deck. Elizar is not the only the wires, the principles. The wires gives a lot of things. Only you should have to know the technique and the principles and the philosophy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, may I? Yes, sir. May yes, I? yes. Go sir, I have a question from you, Barry, sir. That in many cases, uh, after uh, bone uh, transport uh, or uh, compression, when uh, we, even after one year, we, we see a poor regenerate in some cases. Even after doing piano accordion method, the good regenerate fails. In that cases, what do you do, sir? Do you give a graft or something else, sir? Uh, see, uh, Huda, I have never used any graft. Never. Never. If you go see, your bone is not... Uh, bone quality is not good, regenerate is very poor, scanty, you can go for autologous bone graft, autologous blood trust infiltration. Okay. Autologous blood infiltration. It, it gives a very good. Professor Shipsov always advised me, go for this. You can see the scanty callus formation. I yes. go for five, six, six, you know, ML blood I take from the patient's blood and then I put in that area and it gives very good uh, regeneration board, you know, and I do go. I don't go for uh, uh, any bone grafting. You can do that, but that is the violation of the rule because destruction of osteogenesis. You are, you are doing that. Even if you see, if you see the uh, area is not good. As for example, Professor Shevso was drilling the metaphysis of the tibia in front, tibia, and okay. distal metaphysial region of the. He was just moving. You know, the drilling, the distal part of the tibia and proximal part of the tibia in the metaphysial region to increase circulation. Okay, sir. With 2.5 drill bits or 2 mm K wire, you can go for drilling in the metaphysial region just in the tibial tuberosity below one centimeter of the tibial tuberosity. This is in the proximal and distally, he was also doing all the time. And I follow that one. This is good. And consoler helps you. And autologous blood, autologous yes. blood. Wonderful, sir. Besides uh, autologous uh, blood and drilling, do you uh, use any other alternate method for uh, faster bone regeneration, sir? Any other method like alternate anything, sir? Yes, you you you, you see PRP, PRP. PRP even yeah. even even I am doing this autologous blood in all kinds of tendinitis, golfer's elbow, tennis elbow. I don't use a steroid nowadays. Okay. Never. Right, sir. I go for directly, I take the blood from the patient, 2-3 cc, uh, just I add with a, a 2 cc or local uh, anesthesia, xylocaine or ligulocaine or lidocaine, and you just put directly, good results. So and I have a publication in Kurgan, Kurgan, uh, Elizar Journal, I have a publication regarding this autologous blood infiltration in case of any kinds of tendinitis. Any kinds of golfer salvo, any kinds of tennis elbow, even day equivalent tenosynovitis. Whenever you're going for steroid, it helps dramatically, but recurs again. But with that, no. Exactly, sir. So do you also centrifuge or just uh, give directly, sir? No, I don't centrifuge. I directly go for that. You can Thank do you, centrifuge. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, uh, questioning. Uh, to our professor Mufakar Bhagir. Sir, uh, one more question, one last question, sir, uh, from myself. Uh, there is, uh, 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 you do corticotomy uh, in case of infective uh, gap non-union. Uh, uh, you told us before that uh, in case of corticotomy, the circulation increases, so it helps in union. Uh, uh, do you do bifocal corticotomy in case of uh, non-union? Or when See. will you do the uh, corticotomy? See. There is a uh, controversy regarding this, but I follow strictly the Kurgan Professor Elizarov method. What is that? Professor Elizarov was fond of saying all the time to eliminate infection, vascularization of the infected wood or osteomyelic center is increased by the biological stimulation of corticotomy. Even 
your infection infection as for example metaphyseal region you are going for cordigotomy a three or four centimeter below you have infected wound if you do the cordigotomy go for distraction angiogenesis when you are going for distraction you are creating a new vessels and that new vessels helps to eliminate the infection this is the beauty of distraction angiogenesis even in cavity i have done i am doing the osteotomy you believe it or not and i'm getting good result and research work we can do in our country on the poor patients nobody asks to ask me why you are doing this and on basis of that i'm doing the cases and getting good results uh, one more question sir uh, one last question so in cases of osteomyelitis with bone transport and pus do you do after debridement cordotomy at the same setting or different setting sir I, I do most of the cases you believe it not i'm doing the same case same it depends on but i'm doing the same sitting if i don't have time i go for two or three days later on but i i try to do the same thing because that, that is the theory to eliminate infection vascularization of the osteomyelitis center is increased by the biological stimulation of cordicotomy there's the theory right sir we follow the same sir thank you sir okay thank you thank you very much sir uh, i think uh, it's a great show and uh, sharing knowledge is also a very great thing and i would like to thank suraj tv for helping us to arranging this type of program and definitely renata pharmaceuticals for sponsoring this program uh, dear viewers so hope you will be uh, stay tuned with us and uh, we will see you in the next friday with another topic and till then uh, have a nice day and safe day by wearing mask and keeping distance with each other till then i am dr mohan tanvir ashraf from osa orthopedic solution academy uh, saying you bye bye for today bye bye